How did the Pope and Vatican accumulate all that wealth over the millennium? One method was to put a price tag on sin. Many bishops and popes actively marketed guilt, sin, and fear for profit by selling indulgences. Worshippers were encouraged to prepay for sins they hadn't yet committed and get pardoned ahead of time. Those who didn't pay up risked eternal damnation in Satan's oven. Pope Leo X rebuilt St. Peter's Basilica, selling tickets out of hell and tickets to heaven. During the Dark Ages, the Catholic Church not only hoarded the wealth they collected from the poor, but hoarded knowledge. They kept the masses ignorant and in the dark by denying them a basic education. More than 60,000 armed Christians were on their way to reclaim Jerusalem from the infidel. Between 1095 and 1291 AD, the Pope launched seven bloodbaths called the Christian Crusades, torturing, burning, beheading, and mass murdering hundreds of thousands of Muslims and Jews in the name of God. The Pope's brutal soldiers were called Knights Templar, or Knights of the Temple of Solomon, and evolved into today's secretive brotherhood called the Freemasons. Between 1450 and 1700 AD, the Catholic Church followed up their holy terror with the Inquisition. Based on rumors of practicing witchcraft, the Catholic Church hunted down, tortured, and burned alive millions of innocent women at the stake. War II, the Vatican was criticized for supporting Hitler and his Nazi regime. To this day, the Vatican is still under investigation for plundering Nazi gold from the Swiss bank accounts of Jewish Holocaust victims. Over the past five decades, more than 1,500 priests and bishops have been identified in the sexual assault of tens of thousands of boys and girls in their trusting congregations and orphanages. Why is this filthy rich institution preaching spiritual values of poverty and chastity while cardinals, bishops, and priests cover up their crimes of sexual abuse? Why has the church fought and resisted the compensation claims of their sexually, emotionally, and spiritually traumatized victims? Like Vatican City, London's inner city is also a privately owned corporation or city-state located right smack in the heart of Greater London. It became a sovereign state in 1694 when King William III of Orange privatized and turned the Bank of England over to the bankers. By 1812, Nathan Rothschild crashed the English stock market and scammed control of the Bank of England. Today, the city-state of London is the world's financial power center and the wealthiest square mile on the face of the earth. It houses the Rothschild-controlled Bank of England, Lloyd's of London, the London Stock Exchange, all British banks, the branch offices of 385 foreign banks, and 70 U.S. banks. It has its own courts, its own laws, its own flag, and its own police force. It's not part of Greater London or England or the British Commonwealth and pays no taxes. The city-state of London houses Fleet Street's newspaper and publishing monopolies. It is also the headquarters for worldwide English Freemasonry and headquarters for the worldwide money cartel known as the Crown. Contrary to popular belief, the Crown is not the royal family or the British monarch. The Crown is the private corporate city-state of London. It has a council of 12 members who rule the corporation under a mayor called the Lord Mayor. The Lord Mayor and his 12-member council serve as proxies or representatives who sit in for 13 of the world's wealthiest, most powerful banking families. This ring of 13 ruling families includes the Rothschild family, 
the Warburg family, the Oppenheimer family, and the Schiff family. These families and their descendants run the Crown Corporation of London. The Crown Corporation holds the title to worldwide Crown land in Crown colonies like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. The British Parliament and the British Prime Minister serve as a public front for the hidden power of these ruling Crown families. Like the city-state of London and the Vatican, a third city-state was officially created in 1982. That city-state is called the District of Columbia and is located on 10 square miles of land in the heart of Washington. The District of Columbia flies its own flag and has its own independent constitution. Although geographically separate, the city-states of London, the Vatican, and the District of Columbia are one interlocking empire called Empire of the City. The flag of Washington's District of Columbia has three red stars, one for each city-state in the three-city empire. This corporate empire of three city-states controls the world economically through London's inner city, militarily through the District of Columbia, and spiritually through the Vatican. The Constitution for the District of Columbia operates under a tyrannical Roman law known as Lex Fori, which bears no resemblance to the U.S. Constitution. When Congress passed the Act of 1871, it created a separate corporate government for the District of Columbia. This treasonous act allowed the District of Columbia to operate as a corporation outside the original Constitution of the United States and outside of the best interests of American citizens. A sobering study of the signed treaties and charters between Britain and the United States exposes a shocking truth. The United States has always been, and still is, a British Crown colony. King James I was famous not for just changing the Bible into the King James Version, but for signing the first Charter of Virginia in 1606. That charter granted America's British forefathers a license to settle and colonize America. The charter also guaranteed that future kings and queens of England would have sovereign authority over all the citizens and colonized land in America stolen from the Indians. After America declared its independence from Great Britain, the Treaty of 1783 was signed. That treaty specifically identifies the King of England as the Prince of the United States and contradicts the belief that America won the War of Independence. Although King George III of England gave up most of his claims over his American colonies, he kept his right to continue receiving payment for his business venture of colonizing America. If America had really won the War of Independence, they would never have agreed to pay debts and reparations to the King of England. When Congress passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, the U.S. President was made subservient to the King of England. The 13th Amendment is called the Title of Nobility Amendment and forbids U.S. Presidents and their officials from using royal titles like King or Prince or Baron. For some mysterious reason, the 13th Amendment, which was ratified in 1810, no longer appears on current copies of the Constitution. America's blood-soaked War of Independence against the British bankrupted America and turned its citizens into permanent debt slaves of the king. In the War of 1812, the British torched and burned to the ground the White House and all U.S. government buildings and destroyed ratification records of the U.S. Constitution. One century later, a corrupt U.S. Congress committed the biggest theft in world history. They passed Paul Warburg's Federal Reserve Act in 1913 handing over America's gold and silver reserves and total control of America's economy to the Rothschild banksters. Most Americans still believe that the Fed or Federal Reserve is the government. It is not. The Fed is a privately owned banking system whose majority Class A shareholders are the Rothschilds, Warburgs, Kuhn and Loeb, J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, Israel Seif, and the Lehman Brothers. This private banking cartel is the Fed and is never audited and never pays taxes. They print and design America's money, which displays their symbols of an Egyptian pyramid, a Masonic all-seeing eye, and the words, in God we trust.
Who exactly is the God they trust? They also collect American taxpayers' money through the IRS. Then they loan it back again with interest to pay for roads, bridges, and other public works. American presidents are handpicked and financed by these special interest power groups. Like George W. Bush, John Forbes Carey, whose initials are JFK, is a member of Yale University's Skull and Bones Brotherhood. The Forbes part of John Kerry's name identifies his descendancy from Captain Robert Bennett Forbes, who was a drug runner for the Rothschild's opium drug trade with China in the 1800s. 